Hey heroes, I'm Kyle Stover with Leaderboard, and this video we're counting 10 secrets to playing Overwatch better. Number 1. Learn everyone's abilities, even the ones you hate. Overwatch heroes are designed to be easy to learn but hard to master. Whether you're playing as them or against them, it's helpful to know what everyone does. Each character is unique not just in playstyle but also in what their buttons do. For players on the computer, Soldier 76's shift is the traditional sprint, while for May it's turn into an ice block and heal yourself. Luckily, you can try out different characters in the training hall, as well as against AI opponents. Try out different characters to see who fits your playstyle best, and have a few picks across the four classes to change between. You will want to get to know how the different abilities interact to really push your teamwork. Mercy's damage boosting beam is a powerful buff, so be sure to lock onto a teammate you can follow that has a solid attack option. A Reinhardt with a shield up isn't going to be someone who is doing a lot of damage. Good news for teammates though, barriers such as Winston's bubble and Reinhardt's shield block enemy fire but allow teammates to shoot through it. Though watch out as anyone else can walk through it to come at you. Stay behind Reinhardt and cover his back while he provides vital cover. There are no characters who are hard counters to other heroes, but rather heroes that counter certain situations well. Know who has the right ability for the job. As AlphaCast put it so well, be extra careful about the sound. Enemies have louder footsteps than your friendlies do, so if you hear loud boots, that's typically someone you don't want near you. But keep in mind that it's the same thing for your enemies, so they might know you're coming just by the sound of your footsteps. Number two, communication is key. Communication is life, communication is love. Overwatch supports in-game voice chat, so make sure you have a decent headset and mic. You'll likely want to stick with push to talk if just playing with random people online. While with friends, I personally like to go hands-free. If you can't talk, you can always hit the C key on the computer to open up the communication wheel. Need a heal? There's a wheel option for that. Is your ultimate ready? There's a wheel option for that too. Just want to say hi? There's a wheel option for that as well. Just don't spam that you need a heal when you're halfway across the map lone wolfing, because no one's there to help. If you let your teammates know what you're doing, you can better coordinate your attacks for some beautiful takedowns. Dropping an ultimate is one thing, but dropping two that work together? Breathtaking. To quote Arms Race, they're not called hotkeys because they'll burn your fingers. You can use them to quickly communicate that your ult is charging or when you need healing or to remind your teammates to group up. Use them from the communication wheel or learn which buttons activate them quickly so you don't have to get out of combat for even a second. Number three, don't change yourself. Change the settings to fit you. Overwatch has a surprising amount of options that you can change around that will give you an important edge depending on your character and playstyle. Do you want Reinhardt's shield to be hold to activate, toggle, or maybe hold to not activate? It's your call. There are several settings for each hero that you can change that might help you do what feels most comfortable. Some give more control, some give you more insight on the battlefield, and some just help you with your little hiccups. We also suggest turning on the kill feed, as it will help keep better track of who is alive and who is dead, which leads us to our next point. Number four, know who is dead or alive, so you can better stay alive. Did you just take out half the enemy team? Just spawn in as half your team died on the point? Know when to charge in and when to hold back. Keep tabs on which team has the advantage and what characters are on the field. You can find that by pulling up the score screen with tab on the PC. If there's a skull over anyone or a red X, they are dead and will take a few seconds to respawn. If the entire enemy team is set up on the point, don't just charge in by yourself. Wait for a few teammates to respawn with you. Can you maybe lure some of them away and pick them off? Or maybe harass them by firing into an area from afar? Wait until you have backup before fully engaging. Otherwise, you're just gonna go in one at a time. As Roars put so perfectly, don't stream in. If you go in one at a time, you're not gonna be able to succeed and you'll just be feeding their ultimates. Number five, swap heroes. There aren't over 20 heroes, so you can main one of them. Remember, this isn't a MOBA. You shouldn't stick with one character through the entire game. Think of the characters more as weapon kits, and pick the right one for the job if the last one wasn't cutting it. Is the payload passing through a tight area? Well, Reaper shotguns are most effective in a close quarter area. Is the other team tearing you apart with damage? Try a heavy tank, a character who can take a lot of damage and return some of it. Be sure to watch what characters your teammates are on so you don't double up or triple up and leave your team without a healer. Your ultimate is powerful, but if there's no real opening to use it, don't hesitate to switch to another character without unleashing it. Better to get another ultimate charging than hold on to one waiting for a chance while your team loses valuable time. Number 6. 
Stick to the objective, or at least stick with your teammates. Something to get used to in Overwatch is that the game types are objective-based and kills don't win you the game, like capturing the points and moving or stopping the payload. Defending a point is more important than trying for a play of the game and running off on your own. At times that means preparing for the next enemy attack, and sometimes that means stalling for time. Fights should be happening at the important areas on the map, so don't go wandering around looking for a fight. Roadhog is the king of one-on-one -on -one fights, so unless you're him, stick with a teammate, or five of them, as you'll benefit from their support and abilities. Run off alone, die alone. As pointed out by 4th Sniper, many players don't realize how useful the payload is as cover. While a lot of ultimates like Reinhardt's Earthshatter or May's Blizzard can pass through the payload, projectiles cannot. If you're having trouble getting past a turret or a bastion setup, stand on the other side of the payload to escort it. A lot of people don't realize that you can't shoot through it. While a bastion can shoot down a Reinhardt barrier, can't shoot the payload. Number 7. Learn the map top to bottom and bottom to top. Get to know the maps as different characters as they all have their own unique options of how to get around. There are ledges and high points that offer great vantage points, but they're only accessible to heroes like Widowmaker with her grappling hook or Faro with her jetpack. Hanamura specifically has a side path with a sizable gap that keeps certain characters from crossing over. Someone like Zarya can't make the jump, but a quick Tracer or Diva can easily make the distance and surprise their enemies. Take some time between matchmaking or skirmishes to explore the maps while you're not being fired at or pushing an objective. Learning where the health packs are located will help you stay in the fight longer without wandering around. While checking over a map, also make note of where the good spots are for ambushes, planking, and turret placement. As Time to Grind pointed out, there are secret routes on all of the maps. Certain heroes can take very specific routes that no other hero can, so be sure to try to flank enemies and prevent your team from getting flanked by those heroes. Several YouTubers have made videos showcasing different maps' secret routes. If you want to do a little bit of homework, check them out. They are definitely worth your time. Number 8. Pay attention to team composition. Your team doesn't need three Widowmakers. When you first load into a match, Overwatch will give you advice for picking your team lineup. These will read no healer, not enough damage, too many offense characters, too many of the same heroes, etc. And taking this advice will help balance out your team composition better. Of course, there's going to be a little back and forth, so play with what you're comfortable with, but be willing to change classes as needed. You do not main in this game or only play one class type it, and you will change things up as the match gets going. The characters are all useful in different situations and at different points on the map. You'll also want to watch the other team's composition as the game goes on. They'll be changing to counter your team, so stay fluid and communicate with your teammates. Is a Bastion tearing up your team? Get a Widowmaker to bring it down from afar. Need more defense? Get a Symmetra to lay down some turrets and shields. Dealing with some pesky mobile characters? Get a May or a McCree and stun them in place to take them out. Number 9. Everyone is OP'd, so no one's OP'd. Literally every character in Overwatch has had people complain about needing to be nerfed and needing to be buffed. While no character is a hard counter to another, each character has their own strengths, weaknesses, and situations that they're best at. Whether on offense or defense, you'll want to have a decent damage output, a hardy tank or two, and some support heroes, as well as builders, defensive characters, and the occasional sniper. It's all situational for what your team is doing and where you are on the map. Bastion does high damage extremely fast in turret mode. Genji can deflect all that damage fired at him back at the Bastion. Tracer can blink around extremely fast. Widowmaker can snipe characters from far away. Junkrat's Riptire can climb walls. Try something new if a character is constantly stopping you. You have 21 options to pick from, so make sure you're trying everyone out. Number 10. Don't hoard your ultimate. Use it or lose it. Your ultimate is a power ability that can change the course of a push, but you don't want to hold on to it for too long waiting for that one epic moment. You'll do more to win a match if you get to fire off more than one ultimate. Don't waste it as soon as you get it, but remember that you don't charge another ultimate until the first one is depleted. Try to do as much damage as you can and get charging onto the next one. Even just taking out one character or making the other team have to retreat for a second can make a difference and help your team towards the objective. It's not all about making play of the game, and use that ult without remorse. The opposite is true for support ultimates. As Empiric points out, make sure that you get a few teammates when using a support ultimate. A sound barrier, transcendence, and resurrection are not as useful for just yourself or one other teammate. Try to get two or more of your teammates involved in it to allow you to get the most out of your ult. 
Thanks for watching 10 Secrets to Being a Better Overwatch Player. What's your favorite Overwatch play? Comment below to let us know. Personally, my favorite moment is whenever a Zarya pulls off her Graviton Surge with a friendly Barrage, Deadeye, or Dragon Strike to get a whole team wipe. I can't even be mad if it was my team that got their butts handed to them, because that's just a thing of beauty. If you like this video, be sure to check out Leaderboard's other videos in the annotations and links in the description. New videos dropping in every week, so let us know what game you want to be covered next. And remember, if you like getting more from your games, subscribe to the Leaderboard, where we help you game smarter.